So our work's focused on colicin-like bactericins, which are active against plant pathogenic bacteria. So the ultimate aim of this work is to create disease-resistant transgenic crops that express bactericins, and through bactericin expression, are resistant to specific bacterial pathogens. So this will require the making genetically modified plants. Genetic modification is not a popular strategy in Europe, but worldwide this is very different. So for example, the Bt toxin, which is an insecticidal toxin, has been introduced into a range of crops. And this has been a major success story, both commercially and in terms of increased yield. Our idea is to take bacteriocins from, from plant pathogens such as Pectobacterium and Pseudomonas syringae and create disease-resistant transgenic crops that express these. So our, our first aim is to identify novel bacteriocins, and we can do this by bioinformatics or simply for, for screening for bacteriocin production. So both of these are extremely simple and extremely effective, and we can discover a range of bacteriocins from the genome sequences of Pectobacterium and Pseudomonas syringae or by screening isolates of these bacteria. So one example of a bacteriocin we found was Pectocin M1, so this is a very unusual bacteriocin. It has a, a receptor binding domain which is very similar to spinach ferredoxin and a catalytic domain which is similar to colicin M. And it seems that bacteria, Pectobacterium, have acquired a host gene, the ferredoxin gene, coupled this to an active catalytic domain and this resulted in an active bacteriocin. So ferredoxins are very unusual for, for use as a receptor binding domain. They contain an iron sulfur cluster. And it may be the case that the bacteriocin is hijacking an existing iron uptake mechanism whereby pectobacterium acquire iron from ferredoxin during infection. So does it actually work? So we've expressed bacteriocins in plants and it seems that we can actually express active bacteriocins in plants. So this first picture, this is, this is a fluorescent microscopy, a transient expression of, of a bacteriocin syringus in M. So this is coupled to GFP, and this is in plant mesophyll cells. It looks like we can successfully express bacteriocins. This middle panel shows transient expression of a MCTAG variant, and this shows us the proteins of the right size. And then finally, this inhibition assay shows that when we express either syringus in X or syringus in M, uh, in plant leaves and then use these leaves to uh, spot onto a growing lawn of an indicator strain of Pseudomonas syringae. We can see clear, see clear zones of inhibition that are absent in the control leaf. And then finally, we've looked at whether expressing bacteriocins give rise to a, a resistant phenotype. So here we're counting bacteria. So we've, we've infected leaves of Nicotiniana with, uh, with Pseudomonas syringae. And now we're counting colony forming units at various points after infection. So the untransformed cells, we can see high levels of, of bacteria in the leaves. In GFP transformed cells, there are also high levels of bacteria in the leaves. For syringes in X, we don't recover any bacteria, even very quickly after infection. But for syringes in M, we do. So it seems that some bacteria sins work, syringes in X, but some don't, syringes in M. And this tallies up with symptoms when we look at the leaves. So here on the final panel, we can see leaves of, of untransformed cells which have been infected with Pseudomonas syringae, leaves of the control, GFP expressing plant. In the final panel, we can see that these colony counts tally up very well with disease symptoms. So in an untransformed leaf, uh, the, there's extensive damage to the leaf. In a leaf expressing just GFP, again, we see extensive damage. But in a leaf expressing syringes in X, we see a complete lack of symptoms. So for syringes in X, at least, this approach seems to work well.